Now we're going to get some more political reaction to the president's speech. We are joined by Florida Representative Maria Salazar. Congresswoman, it's good to see you. Good to have you here. What is your initial reaction to the president's national address just now? Well, the initial reaction is that we in Congress, the Republican conference, now we have a sense of urgency because, as the president said, he was going to be sending, and uh, probably tonight or tomorrow, a $100 billion bill uh, for Ukraine, Taiwan, and for, for Israel. So this uh, makes the Republican conference have to think twice what is it that we're going to do. Everything indicates that tomorrow at 10, we were going to go to another round of voting uh, for uh, Jim Jordan, Chairman Jim Jordan. I'm not sure if he has been able to secure the votes that he needs in order to make it to 217, but apparently uh, he is going to try uh, once again for the third time. If that doesn't succeed and if he doesn't become the speaker tomorrow, then we should look for other avenues. And the only one that I can think of is to empower the uh, the temporary speaker, Patrick McHenry, so then he can bring to the floor this package and we could help our allies. Those are the two scenarios that I see, but uh, this has created a sense of urgency for the Republicans in Congress. The president is asking for additional funds for Israel and Ukraine as both countries engage in war. Would you support increased funding on both? Of course, we cannot abandon our allies. The one that we had for one year and the new one that needs all the help and all the support, which is Israel. So the, the world has changed in a week. We cannot abandon Ukraine because we know what happens. If we abandon Ukraine, Vladimir Putin will uh, embolden his uh, energies. And uh, next thing that we could see is uh, Putin in Europe. And then that will be a much larger and bigger war that we do not want to fight. We have not lost one American soldier in Ukraine. The Israelis are not asking for our troops. So the least thing we could do is send them the weaponry. And the, and the military equipment that they're asking for, and the, we will have done our job, and the $100 billion that the president is asking. These are, these are very um, difficult times, and we have to write up, be, step up to the plate and be up for the challenge. That's the least thing we could do. As you said, we're an indispensable nation. We still are, and we have to behave accordingly. At the beginning of our conversation, you mentioned the vote for a speaker uh, in the House. I'm wondering if you think your colleagues will back increased funding, or will the Biden administration, you think, have to come up with uh, some sort of budget cuts to get the billions he wants for both countries? Well, that's a discussion that we need to have. And, uh, and because this news just came up, I'm sure that we're going to be talking tonight as to if we agree with $100 billion. But we do know that we have to provide our allies the monies that they need. And I'm one of those members of Congress on the Republican side that we know that we need to put the money forth so we will not have to. So this war, war will not escalate, specifically Ukraine. Israel is surrounded by very bad people. Hamas in, the, in, the, in, the, in Gaza, Hezbollah in the north. We have Syria, and, and as we know, Iran is behind all of this. We have to send a very strong message with money and with resources to Iran and saying, do not try to escalate this conflict because you are the one who's gonna wind up in a bad place. But only the president and Congress can support, the, can support that idea, that message. And it's time for us to uh, start working together with the president to join forces and send that message to someone that wants to destroy Israel and the Western world, and not only, specifically us, because that's something else that we need to uh, uh, keep in mind. This is not a, these are not regional conflicts. This is part of a wider problem which is that Iran and all those, China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran, they just want to destroy the West, the way we live, and the values that we live by. 
You've recently co-sponsored a bill looking to give Israel an additional $2 billion for the Iron Dome defense system. That's on top of the $3 billion already given uh, for the Iron Dome system from uh, the U.S. What do you say to those who, who say this humanitarian crisis in Gaza deserves the same level of attention? Well, look, uh, I have always said that the Palestinians are as victims of Hamas as the Israelis are. We know that Hamas invaded or penetrated Gaza in 2007, and from that moment on, they have not allowed for the Gazians or, or the Palestinians who live in that strip to really be free to determine who they want to be governed by. Hamas is a tyranny, is a dictatorship, and, and the Palestinians are the women and children who are trying to escape and not be part of this Hamas world, they're victims. One of the things that I've never understood is what, where are the Arab countries? Where is Jordan? Where is Egypt? Why don't they open that southern border so everyone, every Palestinian, men, women, and children that want to escape, they can do so and go, and go to Egypt? I've never understood why, if they are Muslim brothers and sisters, what about Jordan? What about Syria? What about Lebanon? Why can't they go there and escape Hamas? That's the double uh, morality that we sometimes see in the Middle East. So I don't think that we you can that you can conflate or that you can equate that Israel is fighting this war because of self-defense, and Hamas is only trying to destroy Israel. Congressman Salazar, thank you so much for taking the time. We we appreciate the comments. Of course, thanks to you for the opportunity. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.